right, so I got my homie here today. We're gonna to be doing a haircut beard trim on him. It's gonna be pretty much a transformation. What are you looking to do with your, your hair today? We'll go over that first. Looking to go uh, pretty short on the beard and pretty short on the hair. Okay. Um, gonna be getting it tight on the sides and faded up to that. Okay. I, can, I can pull up some pictures for you. Let's see. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> you go on camera, dude. <laughs> so looking for something like that. Something in that ballpark. Okay. Both of these I found off of y'all's website. So just uh, looking at the styles I could go for, but something preferably like this with my hair. Okay, I got a question for you as well. So ready. the style that you're showing me, like as far as like uh, the beard and like the side of the hair, like I see the fade and the length of it and everything, uh -huh. but these are gonna have like a natural part in the hair as well as on this one right here. Uh -huh. um, so you can see like they're separating it from shorter to longer and like pushing it over to a dominant side mm -hmm. as well as this one's gonna be more, it looks like just textured and kind of messy in the front. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to slick your hair over and kind of have it a little bit cleaner like in, like in this one right here? Which like his is textured and kind of fluffed up but like as you can see like he separates it and has like that natural part there where I would assume just because I can't see this left side of his head right there, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be all blended into one, you know, side of his head and there's not going to be like a natural part over there. Like it's going to just kind of all go to the right side. I would say, yeah, definitely like this being just more textured and natural instead of having a, a defined part. Okay. It's probably what we're going for. All right, cool. And then I'm, I mean, we're going to be taking a lot of length off. Oh, like yes. I, you know, it's just a picture, so I kind of have to estimate how long it is, but I'm going to exactly. say it's probably probably anywhere between like three and five inches on top right there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna start a little modest and, and leave maybe about five inches on your head. And okay. if you wanna chip away at it and go shorter, we can always go shorter compared yeah, yeah. to taking too much off. You know? But it, it cut short, not long. But, and yep. then the beard, you want it close to the face, how, how he has it as well? Yeah, close to the face. I, I feel like I've had the beard for a while, so I'm wanting to get something a little bit new. Still like, still a little bit scruffy like that. Okay. You know? Not too short, but um, I do like the length on this. This right here. Okay, so a little the, bit. okay, so this one's gonna be a little bit more grown in, as you can see. Yeah. Where, where the other one in the first picture you showed me yeah. is definitely gonna be around like I would say a three to a four guard, kind of okay. like what I have right now. Um, yes, yeah, so I want I want what you have. You want what yeah, I have? Three, three to four guard. That's what I used to okay. use when I was uh, right. when I would trim. Sweet. I'll start with a four, and then uh, if you want to drop down to a three, we can do a three. Awesome. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, there's a whole lot of hair, and I didn't didn't ever think I'd have it this long. So. Yeah, that's pretty long. Yeah. How long have you been growing the hair? Uh, since last summer. I, I had it buzzed last summer. Jeez. Uh, summer 21. So I was going to say. Yeah. It took me two years to get out of here. <laughs> 18 months or whatever it was. Yeah, I got a buddy who grew his hair out for like three years and he barely hit this length, like yeah. all his hair. It's weird because it'll move, it'll grow really quickly sometimes and then sometimes it'll grow really slowly. Like, you'll, it just kind of sneaks up on you. So, yeah. I. The long hair was something I was I just kind of stumbled into. So. And what uh, brought you to make this change today? Uh, I've I've been wanting to do it for a while, and I feel like um, like I feel like it's just something new. I'm living in a new city. Okay. Try something new. Go out. I've always always been told I look better with the shorter hair and the shorter beard. So uh, that may be just from my mother, but uh, you know. What. Um, <laughs> Do you, did you color your hair or is it naturally this color? Naturally red, yeah. Irish, yeah. born and raised. Yep. It's like it, it's red and it goes down almost like a blonde yeah, at the bottom I, of I it. I think the, the sun bleached it because it sits outside the hats. Okay, So like, that makes sense, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I'm almost always wearing hats, which is probably why I'm thinning a little bit at the top. But um, yeah, we. Uh, it's, it's weird because uh, when you have the hat on, people are like, oh, do you color your beard? because my hair looks blonde. I'm like, no, no, it's just how it is, man. And then I guess I got one more question for you as well when it comes to the hair that we're gonna do today. Uh -huh. What side would you like to push it to? What would you normally do when you have a short haircut? So with my right hand, I'll usually push it over towards the left. Oh, the yeah, left, all right. That cool. direction, yeah. Sweet. And I'm just gonna cut all this bulk off real quick, just get it out the way. And chop, but hold on, let me go to a better angle, just for a thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Okay, two seconds, two seconds. Go. It's gone. All right, we're done. <laughs> man, I feel like a new man.
And obviously, that's just a quick way. There's a lot of other ways to be bold, but you know, he's not gonna want all that hair. <laughs> That's it. I just gotta make sure these these ends are even. We'll give you a little bob here, and then you're done. All right. So then I'm gonna keep debulking since we're going to a, about a three to a four. Yeah. You know, we it's gonna be pretty close to the scalp, so we can get rid of all this. I like to debulk. You know, not too too short, but relatively, so I can see over the year a bit and just mm -hmm. get going on the haircut. Damn, it already does look better. <laughs> it gets thicker. That's for sure. Got a yeah. lot of hair. Thin at the t thin at the ends for sure. I could definitely. I think that's the hat. Yeah, the hat's protecting it, but it's also, yeah. Uh, just bring this in. I'm a little OCD, so I need things to kind of be even and structured all the way around. Hey man, I feel I you there. Do not worry. Yeah, yeah I guess I'd rather you be OCD right now than. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm gonna yeah. start with this four just to start out with, just cause like, you know, he's got really fine hair, so we don't wanna go too, too short. And I'm afraid the three might be a little too short, so. Yeah. We'll take that four in there, and then that five will give us some leverage that we'll blend into to kind of soften everything up. But you can see this four is doing well. It's still gonna have like a really good neck outline and keep some darkness on his hair. Cause I'm sure his scalp hasn't seen any sun in a year. <laughs> so, you know, it's gonna be a little bright at first. The beard, that's the one where I'm interested in. The neck hadn't seen the sun in years. How long, how long have you lived out in Seattle for? Uh, moved in July this year. Okay. So. Uh, and where are you coming from? Coming from Georgia, born and raised. Oh, sweet. Yeah, graduated college, you know, go dogs, uh, and go Braves, as you saw in the hat over there. Um, and graduated college, took a, took a little bit off and uh, did a road trip out to Seattle with uh, my buddies Cam, Maddie, and my sister. So, yeah, really fun road trip. Like hit, I think we hit like 20 different national parks on the way out, so. And kind of change your perspective on the place or something? You ended up falling in love out there? I, uh, so I did a road trip in between my uh, fourth and my fifth year at college and I kind of did like a tour of the country almost and went to like all these major cities that I thought I'd want to live in. Uh -huh. And I went to LA, went to San Diego, went to San Fran and Bay Area and all that, and um, Denver, Salt Lake, just you name it, I went to it out west. Uh, and I had already been to all the major four in Texas. Um, and I was like, let me go to Seattle, which I went in 2016 with the family. Uh, but I was like, let me get back out there and see what it's about. And I was by myself, just went out and adventured and just really enjoyed it, had a, had a really good time, and I was like, I applied to a couple jobs out there, obviously Boeing being a, a very big employer up there and it being the, the big white whale of uh, the Pacific Northwest, I was like, working for Boeing would be ideal and being able to work and get, get on that project is really fun, especially being an engineer, so, yeah. Yeah, I fell in love with Seattle and then had the options between uh, Savannah, Georgia, uh, uh, LA and Seattle. I was like, I think I think Seattle would be best for me right now, so. Are you like a outdoorsman? Do you like to go hiking and stuff like that out there? Almost every weekend I've been there, I've been hiking, camping, Sick. biking, you name it, just anything outdoors. I've been wanting to get into climbing recently, but that's, uh, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta build up the strength for that because my, all my all my muscle is in my legs, so uh, I, it's purely built for biking and hiking. I agree. I have a there's a rock climbing gym out here. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gone to a few times, and you know, I work out regularly, but it's like a whole different kind of stimulus. Like you know, it's a different set of muscles that you use for climbing compared to, you know, just squatting or exactly deadlifting and stuff like that. And then like grip strength and everything, and being able to hang on. It's like. My, my forearms aren't strong enough to hold on to my legs, basically, is what, what it ends up being. No, I, so. I remember when I went, like, my hands hurt, like, for mm -hmm. a week afterwards because all my little muscles and my fingers were just, like, sore as shit. You get those, like, man calluses all over your hands. And by the end of it, you look like you're, like, a corn husker, basically. You're just super calloused up and everything. Yep. So this would be that four. Like I said, it uh, leaves pretty good darkness on the side still relatively you know tight fade to the head I'm mm -hmm. gonna go ahead and uh, 
just line everything up around the neck, create a good foundation, and I can kind of, I like to see cuts from the bigger picture, not just like what I'm doing at the moment. So, yeah, hyper focus. Yeah, just, see it from the macro, not the yeah, micro. Yeah, so it just helps me, um, like I said, see the vision for what I'm trying to do and, and what I want to achieve at the end goal. Exactly. But this will be that four, and then we'll keep on going from here. Feel better already? Oh yeah, I, I, having it off the ears is like, <laughs> I already feel a little bit lighter. <laughs> I weighed myself before I left. I was, uh, <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm curious how much I weigh before uh, before I get rid of this head of hair. Now we're gonna put that five in for him. Just softly, kind of flick out. I still want to create some roundness around the occipital bone right here. And then, like I said, this five will leave him still a good amount of hair on the side to lay down because his hair is very fine and straight. So. I don't want to create anything that's going to stick out on him and be too, too short of a cut. Especially because this is a lot of trauma for his hair since, you know, he hasn't had a haircut in a while. A you, might not know, you might not know how it reacts. It might react a little differently than somebody who gets their hair cut right, you know, every two weeks, yeah. yeah. These clippers are nice, man. It ain't tugging or nothing. Huh? Got to keep them oiled right. Yeah. But no, nah, they're, they're definitely there's some newer ones I just got. Um, my coworker Francisco that works here, he uh, <laughs> recommended them to me. He uses them, and so, um, yeah, he, he got me to get a pair, and I've liked them ever since. They're really good clippers. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're feeling great. I've had it where like they're basically yanking your hair out. No, I believe it. <laughs> it it's uh, <laughs> it's not the Steve method. That's he has like the. That's what you get for seven dollars. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's also rural Georgia, you know. You, you don't get th nothing too fancy out there. How the Braves doing this year? <laughs> uh, got put out in the NLDS about a couple days ago. Okay. Um, By um, New York. I think they were playing the Padres. Oh, okay, yeah. No, no, that no, they lost to the Phillies. Phillies, uh, Padres beat the Dodgers. Phillies beat the Braves, uh, and Padres beat the Mets, which is all I cared about. <laughs> yeah, I've been catching a, a couple games here and there, just like randomly. I'm not really. <laughs> have a favorite team or anything like that. Not a huge seam head, but... There's know. been some good baseball on this past this past year. Are you an Astros fan? I'm not, man. No. Who you root for? Uh, I mean, honestly, I like the Yankees. Okay. I'm trying to see, you know, what they can do. But like I said, I don't have, like, a definitive team that I like. I'm more... <laughs> I'm just watching it for the competition. Exactly. I mean, I played baseball, like, my whole life growing up. What position? Uh, so I started at catcher, and then I eventually moved over to shortstop and third. I could see that. Yeah, so, you know, I love baseball, but I don't know. I've, uh, I don't really watch too much traditional sports anymore. I'm more of a UFC, MMA fan, so mm -hmm. that's, like, my thing right now. I, uh, I'm the very, like, generic UFC fan. Just, like, if Connor's fighting, I'll watch. If uh, Khabib's fighting, I'll watch. Like, not uh, too in detail, I but... Watched in a while. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Connor had fought in what three years or some shit like that. He, he had that. Uh, I can't remember who he was fighting, but he, he broke his leg in that fight. Yeah, he was fighting Dustin Poirier. That's right. Yeah, so Khabib actually has a protege that he's coaching that fights tomorrow for the title. Khabib pretty much gave up and, and vacated. So um, that, that, it's going to be a really good card tomorrow going on in Abu Dhabi. So. That'd be that'd be a fun one to go watch. Like go to Abu Dhabi, like get the whole experience. Oh yeah. yeah, but but yeah. So that's going on tomorrow, which I'm excited to watch. And then yeah, I know there'll probably be some baseball on this weekend as well. Yep. Yankees are still in it. They uh, barely beat the Guardians recently. So. Yeah, I, well, I know they're they're zero and two against the Astros right now. Yeah, oh jeez. Yeah, the Astros beat them last <laughs> night and then the night before. Yeah. I'm gonna throw it out there. This might not be popular in Texas, but I I hate the Astros. It's okay, man. That's, hate what? He hates the Astros. I don't know who they are. Uh, it's a baseball team, the Houston Astros. Yeah. Well, there's a good thing uh, Francisco isn't here today because he's from Houston <laughs> and uh, big Astros fan. He'd see that Braves hat. We beat him last year in the in the World Series, so that was uh, it has the patch on the side that 2021 yeah i remember yeah. that i was in chicago at the time and i was watching it at a restaurant i was eating at and it's like all right dang Brains are doing something this year 
And then I'm going to taper this down, but I'm just going to get rid of all this longer hair down here and then we'll taper it down and get it all nice and blended for him. But like I said, just creating the foundation. It's like a house, you know, got to build the walls and the, and the foundation before you go up to the roof and everything like that. We're going we're gonna to make this house a home. We are. <laughs> How long have you been cutting hair? Um, this your first time? No. Yeah, actually, I, I, don't, I don't even work here. Actually, they, they paid me to fill in, and uh, filling in for filming. Uh, yeah, Carlos just stole a camera. And was, was yeah, they were around. like, you kind of look like a barber. They're like, your beard's clean. Come on. They're like, we, we, on need, in, we need you. Know what you're doing. Yeah, it's like a, I'm actually just the maintenance guy around here. <laughs> I'm um, an electrician. <laughs> I've been going on, I want to say, a little under five years. Okay. I'm at about four and a half right now. What made you get into it? Honestly, just um, it was an opportunity for me. I had never really cut hair. Or honestly, was interested in cutting hair at the time. Um, and yeah, it was an opportunity. Um, I wanted to kind of change what I was doing at the time. And so I met some people in the, in the industry and they offered me a job at their barber shop uh, working the front desk. And kind of, you know, they promised me a chair if I ever wanted to go to school and learn how to cut hair. And so, like I said, it, it took me a while because I was, um, I thought cutting hair was one of those things people were just gifted with. Like yeah. I thought, you, I thought you know, they just woke up and knew how to do that. Kind of yeah. like drawing a little it's, bit. It's like an art form too, yeah. you know, but you can still learn the art form. Yeah, and so, you know, I did, uh, I went to bar, I got uh, enough courage to sign up for barber school. Hell yeah. Went to barber school and then uh, the rest is history, yeah. So what, uh, what all does barber school entail? Um, From someone that has zero clue. Like I have people that have gone for, um, to be uh, like to cut women's hair, but like for you, like what? What? I mean, so it's pretty much the same thing. Like okay. cosmetology school and barber school are kind of like one and the same. Al almost, they're they're different. There's different aspects that you kind of learn, um, you know, in the classroom and on the floor and stuff like that. But as far as um, the hours are a little different. Like I think cosmetologists used to have to go for a thousand hours, yeah. and barbers had to go for fifteen hundred. But we all learned the same thing. Like I learned how to do, you know, color on hair and perms and blowouts and blow dry and like Damn, all that other stuff. Damn, why did we stuff. do a perm today? Yeah, so you know, well, I don't do. I, don't, I learned them in school. I, don't, I haven't done one in about four years, so that would, that would be a tough perm if it came through. Too late, nine years. And uh, you know, I learned color and stuff like that, color correction and how to color hair and curl and roll hair and all that, but. You know, we also learn uh, razor work and stuff because yeah. we do a lot of like, you know, straight face shaves and beard trims and stuff. So that really the only difference is cosmetologists can't use a straight razor and barbers can use a straight razor. Yeah. Um, That's so, where that extra 500 hours comes in. Exactly. But um, I mean, I will say barber school for me at least was more of a kind of getting a piece of paper, a license more than anything else. Exactly. And uh, yeah, I kind of learned everything else in the barbershop just from trial and error. And it's the best way to learn. Yeah, not being afraid to kind of fuck up here and there. So. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's been a good trade and I enjoy it. I'm glad I did it. Helped me, you know, become an individual and kind of go to my own beat and stuff like that. Exactly. I can kind of be who I want to be. And I was, um, I was in the medical field beforehand. Okay. Um, and then I kind of worked on cars at one point too at a dealership. Damn, so, you've been around. Yeah, so you know, I've, I've kind of seen like the corporate stuff and like. And he's only 18. <laughs> yeah, I'm fresh out of high school. And so, um, yeah, and you know, I didn't. I just realized I didn't want to do that. I kind of wanted to do a, a, a different avenue, which like you know, my parents weren't too thrilled about at first. They're like, "Why do you want to do that?" And. I don't know. It was just more of a not going the traditional route, which exactly. has kind of always been my Parents my are always going to yeah. tell you, like, go be a doctor, go be a lawyer, make me money. You know? And for me, you know, like we make good money, I'm taken care of, but it's also just the freedom that barbering gives me, I think, is what kind of pulled me in towards it. It gives you like a creative outlet, too. I think that's like something that's kind of hard to find. No, for sure. So. measure your hair on top real quick just to kind of see so got about four inches right there and then about another a little over an inch so we got about five inches already so I said we we're gonna leave five on top but we can actually cut some because it's a little long and I want you to you know be able to um, 
to have some length to, to cut off as well as like spike up and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you new to Austin? I'm born and raised here. Born and raised, Austinite, yes sir. What do you what's your favorite thing about Austin? Man. Mm. Hard, hard to pick, I know. I mean, I'm gonna go the opposite way with it. Like, I'm I'm a little over Austin. It's oh, like, okay. I'm I'm born and raised here. It'll always be home. I always love it. But uh, you know, it's it's kind of bittersweet. It's yeah. it's changing a lot, and yes. uh, the things that were really accessible and easy to kind of do out here that made it fun are yeah. kind of like becoming a little oversaturated at the moment. So, um, but you know, I, I still love Austin. It's a great place. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I would say anything's my favorite thing is probably just being able to, you know, have really good weather most of the time and, you know, kind of be a little bit more outdoors and go hiking, biking, running, stuff like that. So where's your favorite hike near here? Mm, I like to go to the green belt and stuff, but, um, you know, I do a lot of like bike cycling and stuff um, mm -hmm. as far as like just riding through the city and putting some miles in. So I like doing that a lot as well. It's a good way to see the city. Yeah, it's probably one of my favorite things. They're, right there is like cycling through Austin is like a really nice place. It's a fun adventure too, you know, you really get to see everything you want and like really kind of get lost and find your way back. That's like some of the best things to do. You get, I feel like you get to see the city in a different kind of perspective where like me, I used to like, purposely go through where a lot of the homeless would be at yeah. and uh, ride through there just to kind of you know see see the city for like what it really is and like yeah. that kind of stuff and uh, that was always really fun what's your favorite restaurant out here uh, what do you like in these days so we have a we have a reservation for salt and time tonight oh man uh, I'm looking I love to, that place I'm looking to we went in 2019 and it was when our car broke down here. So we were in a rental car and we were having to drive to Houston to um, have a flight out to get back in time for school. Uh, <laughs> and we were like, let's just go to some steakhouse. Money's no object right now. We're just really sad and mad at the situation, you know? And we just stumbled upon Salt and Time and it was arguably one of the best steaks I've had like I love that place it, it's, it's where I go to eat a steak it's so good it's so fun like all their sides and everything are like all homemade and I agree. they make their own ketchup which is already crazy enough yeah um, yeah I'm we haven't been since then so I'm hoping it you you saying that it's one of your favorite places helps me out because we've been thinking maybe it was just our situation we were like so would y'all have a dinner reservation there yeah got a dinner reservation yeah because i would recommend uh not going for lunch because yeah. they've limited their menu a little bit yeah so you can only get the burger during lunch um, now it's like, like yeah there's no steaks on. available they for me they got some good steaks. burgers but I, I i'm going for a steak you know what you i got mean to. Exactly. yeah the last time i took bob out to lunch and uh I was like, we're about to get some badass steaks and, you know, go eat. And then we got them. They're like, we only have burgers on the menu today. Oh. Yeah, so I was a little disappointed, even though the burger's really good, like I said. But I was uh, still a little upset. When we were uh, we were in Austin for New Year's, um, going from 2020 to 21, and we were trying to get a big reservation for all of us, and it was still COVID going on, and they were uh, – they were like, yeah, we are only doing takeout. And I was like, I'm not taking a hundred dollar steak and like a paper bag out I, to I, eat at my agree. hotel room. I like, agree. It was, it was super frustrating. It's not gonna be the same. Exactly. It's like, um, I would put it on par with Keens, which is one of the best steakhouses in New York. Keens is like, it's super old. It's like, it was 1850 something is uh -huh. when it was founded. Like, uh, Abe Lincoln's eating there, like Teddy Roosevelt's eating there, Babe Ruth's eating there. So that uh, we went there when we were up in New York, and that was uh, one of the best steaks I've ever had. I put it on par with Salt and Pine. Yeah, one of the last. Uh, I was supposed to go to New York a couple of years ago, and we had a reservation at Peter Luger's. Ooh, I haven't been, but I, I that's on the list of places to go. That's for sure. And I'm gonna get you to just look down for me a little bit. Uh, not that much. Don't break your neck. 
and we're just gonna keep tapering. For him, since like I said, his scalp's gonna be you know pretty bright underneath, I'm not gonna taper the skin. I'm gonna do maybe about a half guard. I might stop at a one. I'm just gonna kinda see how it looks with the rest of the cut. What guard are you on now? I'm on a two right now. Okay. We're just working our way down from that four since we use a four as the uh, shortest point of your haircut. Mm -hmm. But I'm a big, you know, I usually ask people whether they want to be tapered or not, but honestly, I kind of stopped at a certain point because I believe like everybody's haircut should be tapered in the back, even if it's not the skin. Yep. Nobody just wants like a block across the back of their neck. Like, exactly. And it doesn't look good and it, it doesn't grow. It doesn't grow back well. So exactly. I've kind of gotten into the habit of doing it a little subtle for some people. And then they're kind of like, oh, you didn't do that last time. Like, thanks for doing that. Or, you know, there's cowlicks in the back of the neck. So it kind of helps with those swirls back there. Yeah. Just settling them down a bit. Exactly. Feels healthy. Yeah, the beard. The beard's the healthiest thing yeah, I got going. Yeah, feels that's, healthy. That's that. That's that beard balm. I didn't use it for a while. I didn't use any balm, and then I was like, I think I need to. Like, that'd probably be a good idea for me. Go for me. Yeah. Same thing. We're just gonna keep just whacking away bulk here, and then we'll go over with that guard and kind of clean everything up. Damn, that looks pretty good for just not caring and just going in there. <laughs> <laughs> this is that natural touch. Like I said, I'm not a barber. They just hired me, man. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, and then we'll go in there with that guard. And now we can knock everything down, get that four. Oh, it's a five with my four. Out. I was going to start looking at age, man. Oh, yeah. Now that the, the 20s are going to Yeah, I'll, I'll be very youthful now. And so I want to just bring it out a little bit, so I'm going to pull on it just a bit. So I want to make sure we're getting everything there. I mean, you can tell even underneath his beard, his skin's very light, hasn't seen too, too much uh, sun under there. So it's going to look a little, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a drastic change, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But we'll get it. And our skin's under there somewhere. Real pale. <laughs> the Conor McGregor in you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Just like that. And I kind of grab it just to guide myself, you know. You mm -hmm. can kind of poke them with the with the guard a bit, and it's a little uncomfortable sometimes. I like to get rid of the neck strip since we got a fresh cape. There's no really need for it at the moment. And you can tell, like all that growth under the yeah. So I'll kind of go against the direction that it's growing in. Just to make sure everything's on an even playing field. Even right here, you can tell like that.
tapering it a bit just because I want this profile to be a little leaner right here and we're tapering it to that four he's got on the side. Right and then you can go ahead and lay back on the pad for me one more time. We're going to go ahead and uh, do some razor on the cheek line and then we'll get you out of here. Put a little bit of old money utility balm in his beard as well as some old money styling balm in his hair. I'm going to start with the styling balm just because it can help transfer over to the beard as well if I still have some left in my hands. And it'll hold, hold everything down. get some of our utility balm in there as you can see we got some new packaging over here nice. I like it a lot it's like good and then I still got a little styling balm in my hand so this is gonna help just like with the flyaways and stuff like that it'll give it a little bit more grit than what it has normally 